What are you doing today? Good day. This is episode four. There's two parts to this episode. Part one is about a book, making a book. Part two is a scoop. Part two starts at 2410. Okay, here I'm just blathering on about the music I'm listening to, and it was copyrighted, so YouTube kicked it off, so I'm just editing this again. Um, I need music to live. I think it's kind of essential. I'm listening to this album here as we go on. Um, there may be some music that I can keep in there, and um, we'll see how that goes. I'll try to just edit out Jimi Hendrix because it seems like it is copyright infringement. All right, I had a student who wanted to make books, and uh, so this demo is about making a book out of slabs, uh, leather hard. You have to look at the book first. Uh, this one actually has leather on it, and so I'm trying to show how to make a surface that would have a texture similar to that. Look at the details, like in the binding on the spine here. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to do with this demonstration. Okay, so I have some chunks of clay that I've used my wire to cut off a block. I'm going to go in, then pound out some slabs. All right, here I'm showing how you use the slats to make a real even slab, uh, which have that piece of clay. And remember to go a different way. Sometimes you got to pound it down a little with your rolling pin first. That's kind of the uh, anvil paddle kind of mallet kind of technique that I might go over with the Yixing techniques eventually here for you. Okay, here you can see how those slats, they hold the rolling pin off of the board at a certain thickness so it gives you an exact thickness on the slab so and I'm just talking about that there so when I was teaching in Nashville Sylvia Hyman asked me if I had a good student who might be her assistant and so that's what I'm explaining here is um, he would come back to the classes and show these techniques that he's learned from her and she was a master trompe artist. Again, looking at Paul Dressang or Sylvia Hyman or Richard Shaw. Uh, so, so you can look at all these amazing artists out there. I'm okay at it, but you really want to look at these masters to check out how they've done it. And ask me questions if you're interested in those directions. I can show you those tricks. So here I'm just crumbling up newspaper and then rolling that newspaper onto the clay. Um, you can roll gentle or hard. You can crumble different types of paper. You can actually use leather or other materials to emboss any texture you want on the surface of a slab. As you see here, it looks like craggly old leather. So there's one little trick. So in this part, I'm just showing it's like my old family Bible. I think it was my grandpa's. I'm actually not religious at all. I'm a humanist, but I keep that. That book is a really great book to look at the texture, the shape, the antiquity of it. So what I was talking about here in the demonstration is like, what is your model? Is it a brand new book? Is it a paperback? Is it leather bound? Um, you got to think about that and look at the details like I discussed earlier on with the idea around the spine. Um, what does that spine of the book look like? So I also say you can use the book as a, a template to cut out the specific shapes that you're looking at. And so here I'm discussing that where you can actually just use the book or you can measure out the book with your ruler and go and think about that rectangle shape that you're making. So this is not just about books. It's anything that you're going to make that's a rectangle or a square or you know even a triangular form. You can think about these techniques. I'm talking about uh, wet slab and leather hard slab in this. And so you need to think about um, the stiffness of the slab and the flexibility of the slab, depending on what you're going to do. So I discussed how you could cut out all the pieces, or if it's still flexible, like see how this one's kind of flexible, I could just actually lay it onto a form like this board that I have. And just use one big piece of clay rather than three. 
Otherwise, I would have to have one piece for the spine, one piece for the front cover, one piece for the back cover, and I would score and slip and put those together. It's just a different way to do it. Um, so here I'm talking about depending on how many pages you're going to put in, the thickness of the book, the thickness of the spine. Is it more open? Then I might actually have stuff between the board to make the book more open. And so you have to think about how you're going to um, create this book. Is it fully open? Then you would probably not put it on this board at all, but maybe lift it up and have two angles. And then you would build a separate form that would then go inside there to illustrate an open book with pages. Here you can see that it's stiffened up enough to get it off that board. Now I'm ready to build a sort of a box on the inside. Um, so I'm going to build it separately here and you see the parts in the spine. It's a little narrower because the pages are compressed. On the um, other longer part it would be thicker where you see the pages in between the front and back cover and so the top and bottom of the pages needs to kind of correlate with that. I'm going to talk about cutting 45 degree angles on these pieces so they come together really tight in a mitered joint. I learned a lot from Ann Courier. I actually got to work with her at Haystack back in the 80s. Uh, amazing woman. She's kind of the queen of leather hard slabs and her work is just impeccable. You should check her out. She teaches at Alfred University and just amazing work. So you can you can be really um, loose with it. You can think about butt joints, but you see that miter there I showed? Uh, that, that angle and another angle come together leave no um, sign of it uh, being put together with slabs. Butt joints you can see the slab. So, so here I have a old folder with some pages and I'm going to emboss the edges of those pages after I put this together. Um, I'm going to work on it a little more but I can take those pages and push it into the moist clay and it'll pick it up very much like the newspaper did for that leather texture. Um, there's different ways to show the pages but I'm just showing that technique. And now I'm scoring obviously and then adding some good glue, the slip you can think of as your glue and I'm putting those corners together and I like to, on sculpture in particular, I like to reinforce those joints with a coil. So that's something that you can think about and you'll see me add a little coil in there at a point here. Once the whole box sort of um, is together, the, once I get the spine on here, uh, I will then add some coils to reinforce those joints. That kind of buttressing or reinforcement in those joints just gives a really strong joint. You don't have to, um, but it is kind of a uh, helps with if, if a crack starts to form. And here I'm talking about you might reinforce it. Obviously you need to have a hole through it so the air circulates, but you might reinforce on a larger book or a larger rectangle form. You might put an X through, you saw I just poked a hole so the air could go through. So you might actually create internal structure, um, sort of an internal armature that will hold up the top and bottom of that book or that rectangle that you're building. Um, obviously that works more in the sculpture side if you're doing utilitarian pieces that are square, you could think about those as uh, compartments in the piece also. Um, so here I am rolling out the coils, like I said. I'm going to reinforce those joints and I want that coil clay to be moister uh, slightly than the actual slab clay that the book is made of. And here I'm showing, I'm using a rib to make those page lines too. I've kind of worked the spine a little. I think I changed my idea on that, but you have to look at where those pages join the spine and what kind of stitching and what kind of details are there. Remember, no matter what you're making, you're trying to look at the details of every object that you make. 
Uh, whether it be a sculpture or a utilitarian piece, you can think about those fine details to um, either talk about texture or talk about smooth qualities, which I bring up a lot. So I've gone through the steps of scoring those pages, the slabs that were the pages, and putting slip on them, and then they make a mark on the interior of the front and back cover and the spine. And I score that area, and I put it in, and then I meld it together. Um, working those joints, uh, there's different ways to think about how you work those joints, but it's generally just with pressure for me, and I don't want to use so much pressure as to ruin the texture. I'm also talking about like what do I do to the surface of this, the front of it, like what is on a book. And so I started playing with it outside of any Trump Loy stuff. And I started getting funky, talking about thinking about calling it the diving skull book or um, something silly. I'm just trying to put some content into this book. What is the book about? Um, why are you using the book? Or whatever form, whatever object you're making you think about what is it for so discussing that here um, again i had to edit it out because there was music in the background that was copyrighted so uh, that's why i'm going blah 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 in the background yay part two this is a scoop so here i'm just discussing that i just slumped it into this shape cutting some cardboard out again you can refer to the slump molding video that i put together for beginner and intermediate, it's also for advanced, so look at that. Um, this kind of looked like cabbage to me. I said, ooh, what about cauliflower? There's all these different things that can make texture on the slab. Um, and so I'm making a scoop because a student wanted a demonstration of a hollow handle, and she was making scoops, so that's why this one's going. Just like the form of the scoop, uh, cutting out negative space in a piece of cardboard, uh, the shape, the profile of that handle you're making. And I say, you know, you can make spouts or legs or whatever this way. And you could see a figurative demonstration that I'm doing where I'm slumping legs and arms and stuff too. Um, so do some research into the Gustav Pottery YouTube channel. But here I'm just discussing that I'm going to be cutting this off uh, right at the line the mold makes. And then I'm going to be scoring and slipping and putting it together. So here I'm discussing that it's not quite leather hard, um, so I can bend that handle. Now there will be music that follows this because it gets quiet, and the music I think is not copyrighted. It's friends of mine, so hopefully. And I'm going to make it bigger. It may seem bigger than proportionally than I really would want it because I'm going to cut it and show a multitude of um, directions you could take um, from slicing it up or cutting into it or opening it up having a different variety of ways to play with not just the slump hole so i'm going to be pinching gently or if you refer again back to the uh, beginning and intermediate videos on slump molding this is just one of those techniques you don't need a wheel or a slap roller or anything just need some cardboard um, and some clay obviously a little, little bit of knowledge. A uh, little, bit, little bit of knowledge is dangerous. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep going. And because I, I like to put it together somewhat wet, um, I can't do it on a much larger form than this, this wet, but you can see how flexible this is. I'm going to get that joint all ready, and then I'm going to bend it into a curve. So ergonomically, this handle will feel good when I'm scooping okay so I get to that point I'm gonna probably I'm just tell you what I'm planning I'm probably gonna cut this off and have a flat plane so it's not rounded so again I'm gonna make this smaller so I cut away it kind of looks like a leg on a horse all right uh, I'm gonna put an elm on because I need music she can't hear okay switch streams it's so nice out I'm gonna listen to this People I know that are just great. Gossamer String Band. I forgot their new band names, but you can look up Gossamer Strings too. And uh, they're just great folk musicians. And this album's just beautiful. So, and it's so nice out. I'm just gonna sit outside and work on this handle for a while. Handle. 
So just kind of got that curve in it. See? I'm gonna just hang out here on the running board. So I'm gonna sit here in the shade, just kind of sled and really smooth it out and get the shape the way I want. I like to use a flexible rib. I like the yellow one. Um, red one works really good too. Uh, um, metal one that you have, a flexible one is good. And again, make sure you keep it clean. I like to get, keep it a little moist, but not wet. Oh, Liat's such a good banjo player. She's playing banjo in this. It's a really pretty song. Okay, so I'm getting this uh, to where I like it. You see the curvature on it that I'm talking about here? So I bent it slightly, and I'm going to keep on smoothing it, sliding it with my thumb and stuff, shaping it, I'm gonna let it stiffen up, then I'm gonna join it to that scoop form. And again, like I said, I think I'm gonna cut this part off. It's kind of big, but you get the sense of what I'm talking about with a hollow, hollow handle. You know, you of course go back to the pulling handle demonstration or building uh, your handles with a variety of other hand building techniques or throwing hollow handles too. But when they get big like this, you, you need to think about them not being solid. You could make them solid and cut them in half and carve them out. You could also think about making molds where you uh, either make a press mold with clay or plaster or slip mold. Um, all right, so that's where I'm at now. Got a little hot out and things are drying out too quickly, but I got this to this point and you see where I've opened it up um, and you can see in there where the scoring and slipping really worked well. Um, I may choose to go in and really work that. I bring up Linda Threadgrill quite often. She was my uh, metals professor and she said the back of the pin is as important as the front and had a lot of great knowledge about the crafting of an object. Um, so the interior of a piece, whether I see it or not, I want to make sure that it's, you know, pretty solid craft-wise. Uh, where I can't get to, I may use a, a paintbrush. Um, I want the paintbrush a little moist. I don't want it dry or cakey, but I can get in there and I can meld that slip um, if I really want to be concerned about a joint, I may actually add a coil, reinforce it, but this is pretty tight, okay? So you can see how this could be used for spout techniques too, and I'll bring that up in other demonstrations. But So I, like I said, I want to make it flat on the back. I might actually make a hook on it, so it can be a scoop that can hang near the flower or whatever that scoop is for. All right, so... Um, it is stiff enough to go ahead and add that slab right now. So I'm going to score um, that area. I love Liat's voice and the harmonies that they get. Really you get a chance to see them they'll they'll come to Ellensburg again uh, hopefully soon uh, and uh, let me know if you like them and I can tell you when they're here all right so I've scored that I'm gonna pull out a slab that is kind of close to that same consistency so not not much harder definitely and then one little trick I don't know if I've gone over this but where you slipped on one piece could be 
kind of a, a tracing pattern to show you where to score and slip on the other piece. So you're not over slipping or over scoring and also it could show you where to cut it too. I'm gonna just put it on, I'm gonna show you a different way here. I'm gonna put it on there, score this part, slip this part, score that, but only that part. So again, so the whole slab doesn't get gooey. Um, I'm gonna add that slip. I prefer a brush with slip on it rather than having gooey hands all the time. Remember that? I even wipe it away so there's not too much. So I like to get it on there and remember wiggling it and getting the, the kind of the teeth of that scoring line to kind of gnash with the other clay teeth. one tool I want. It's not right here, so I gotta go grab it. All the Yixing techniques that I've learned, um, I'm gonna loosely cut this out because I can use this paddling technique. I don't want to cut it all the way out, but I may not want to cut it all the way out because it may be part of the, the design of the piece. You know, I might say cut a shape that's just part of it and the slab becomes part of it. But this is a really nice paddle that I bought in Ding San or Ding Shu. And that's sufficient enough probably, you know, to really paddle those joints and get those joints. I've already wiggled it, like I said. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Okay, so now I paddle that together really tightly. I would put it on a board. Take my fettling, fettling knife, or um, if it's an exacto knife, you gotta be really careful not to cut into your boards, remember that. And I'm gonna cut around here. Remember what I said about the book, it's a hollow object, you need a hole. One of the things about this handle is it's a hollow object, you need a hole, so you gotta plan that out. Um, if it's used a lot and washed a lot, then you think about that utility side of it. All right, so I've cut that out. I have it somewhat, so I might paddle it a little more or rock. Sometimes you can rock the paddle on it. If you like that, like this edge here, maybe I like that edge and I'll just, I'll leave that as like kind of an honest attachment, you know? Take my sledding technique again. Maybe I'll um, just show that joint a little by embossing, kind of like what I did with the pages on the book, you know, just rocking it. Again, there's different ways to look at attachments. We call them, I call them honest attachments or melded attachments. And not that melded attachments are dishonest, but the honest attachments just, you know, show you that there's this piece an element to it and you see you see that um, maybe in something like this where you see this element and I'll fix that that up a little and you know make it a little tighter or roll a texture on it or a variety of things again so I'm thinking about a hook here and now I'm going to attach uh, this to the actual scoop part
So I've let that scoop set up to some degree. I've worked it a little. And because I, I have it kind of coming off the scoop on this curve, I'm gonna think about how I cut that attachment. It could be angular or curved or... Um, Maybe on the bottom I'll have it encapsulate that more. I have this fold over in the top and I might dot it out like to get a sense, find the middle and go to the middle and then go back over to the side or sometimes cutting into a seam is a bad idea. Okay, you saw that? So now I have this opening. get in there. Again, I couldn't get in there from the other side. I'm going to join that slip, move it around anywhere where it scored and slipped, you know. Now I have this handle and the scoop. I got to think about how that, that joins. So that's going to be a little tedious. I'll be lining it up and scoring and slipping and then I'll show you what I do to brace it too. don't like these too much but they do make it quicker um, if they're not digging in enough and you're not getting good score lines and switch over back to the tip of your exacto knife or your needle tool but you see that it's really digging in pretty well and opening that up I do get it wet as you heard me spritzing it and that allows me to really take the clay that's already there kind of loosen that area so it's no longer really tight um, cheese hard clay. It's going back to that loose stage. And I'm pretty liberal with the slip. But then I also then erase the slip again. Like I don't want too much. I want some good squish coming out, some slip squishing out that I can remove after it, both pieces stiffen up a little more. And I don't want to do too much cleanup sometimes. <laughs> so remember that trick of wherever it, it touches, it's going to show you where to slip on the other object. I might actually rock it because I'm going to manipulate this clay a little. And you can see that tells me where then I have to score and slip on that piece. They're great songwriters too. And maybe I should have removed some of that, but I'm just gonna leave it on there to show you the, the amount of cleanup that needs to be done. see what I'm doing but I have it up in the air the flat spot on this scoop handle is kind of nice because I can just do this and then the top part of the handle I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna manipulate that onto the scoop and try I've wiped away all that slip so I'm gonna try and give a kind of an honest attachment if I wanted to meld it maybe I would quit at a certain point here and let it stiffen a little add a wetter coil and meld it in the handle in into the scoop. So lugging or um, gusseting that area might be 
that kind of secondary thing that you do, but you don't do it all at once. Remember the stages of clay are what we're all learning. I'm continually learning that what stage to work a specific piece and what tool to use. So there's my attachment there. It's a little, uh, a little sloppy and I'll clean that up, but you get the sense. And there's the scoop handle, the ergonomics of it. I wanna look at that, um, how it springs off of there and how I can get under that scoop. And I'll brace it up with some sponges and let it dry a little bit. And I'll show you how I brace it. You can use any kind of sponge or even a piece of clay. I'm gonna see how it goes with this. And I'm gonna brace the piece. And I'm gonna give it a rest. I like to say, let your pieces rest a little. Okay, um, so again, you can use clay or sponges. And you see how that allows, if the clay is a little moist, the weight of that handle, I wanna keep that curved. So, that's one reason to like think about an exterior armature of sorts, um, and that's gonna help you out. You could even make a perfect curve or whatever kind of shape you want out of clay, wrap it in cellophane, and lay that handle on that to create um, a kind of a cradle as it's stiffening up. All right, that's it. You've listened to some Hendrix today and the gossamer string. Well, I hope this, again, remember, I take requests, let me know what you're doing. As this quarter progresses, we'll, we'll see where you're going, all right? Peace. So just a little more smoothing out and then some more details and I'm going to add a skull to the cover. Okay, I just remembered that it was called Lake Toba, my friend reminded me. That was the band before. Now they're Gossamer Strings. Now there's the book. I did a little cover image of a skull on there. So I'll play with it a little more, but just get a sense of where I've went with it and then uh, here is a couple details I need to work on. I need to work on the joint there underneath, work on the edge and add a hook and smooth it up a little. So there's your scoop and your book. Thanks for the request. It was fun. Go check out Gossamer Strings. Kyle and Leah, just great. Great do it. Okay, well, I did get another request, and I'm going to be doing some flowers in the next episode, maybe next week sometime. So look forward to seeing different ways to think about flowers. All right, have a good one.